Hello, my Pokemon fans and TBU fans alike. Welcome to week two of the Battle Union and our team analysis for our second match against Trip and the Dallas Arabias. Now, last week, as you would have seen, we had a little bit of bad fortune. We did lose a little bit, a tiny bit. We played questionably, and uh, there, were, there was an unfortunate miss as well later on in the match, which may or may not have made a difference to the end result, but uh, I don't think it matters so much in that we lost. I don't think it would have, I don't think it would have brought the match for us, would have brought it back. But anyway, this is week two, this is a new start, a new beginning, another chance to claim a victory. Now I'm told Trip is a very good opponent, and Yes, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good match because apparently he's very very good. So I, I'm going to be tested, very tested this week. Uh, so let's just do a quick run through of his team, and then we'll get on to the team analysis, and I'll show you guys what I'm bringing this week. So Trip has got Megalope, Curum, Umbreon, Mew, Tangrowth, Entei, Electros, Vaporeon and have a look. so that's Trip's team scary team, lot of power there Mew is as versatile as they come so it can do practically everything Entei hits hard uh, Tangrowth is a decent physical wall Avalog can sit in and tank hits even if it's weak to them uh, as long as they're physical hits if they're special it doesn't do anything it just, it just falls over and dies um, what else was there? Electros has got some pretty good coverage. So yeah. And then of course Megalopony is always very scary. So that's Trip's team. So let's go over what I'm bringing in. The first mom that I'm bringing this week is our boy. The star player of our week one match against uh, Sinister Sableye. Also the only mom that actually killed anything. Poor Jinx nearly did, but uh, not quite. Yep, this week we're bringing back the Winged Terror Aerodactyl. He's back, boys. He's back in turn. He's got a fresh set, and he's raring to go. And you've probably already noticed that I am rocking the Power Herb Sky Attack. Yes, indeed. Power Herb Sky Attack going to kill all of the things. It's kind of an answer to Megalopony, but it also hit a lot of other things very hard. Uh, I think the only thing on his active team that resists it is Electros, if indeed that does come. Uh, the only other thing he's got that resists it is Bronzong, but that's on his bench, so not too many things are going to resist a Power Herb Sky Attack, no matter where we let that bad boy fly. And the great thing is, because we have Substitutes, if we manage to get a sub up, we can then charge a second Sky Attack from behind the sub and because of Aero's speed even if they get rid of the substitutes they're still going to take a uh, sky attack the next turn because XP, uh, Aero outspeeds most things the only thing it doesn't outspeed is either Scarf Mew, Scarf Dente or Megalopony it does not outspeed Megalopony so we need to slow that down but that comes in on one of the later mons so yeah, Crunch is there for coverage against Mew because Mew is a pain in the butt and Stone Edge is there for some extra stab coverage, it also hits Entei very nicely and Curum, and Curum, so that's Aerodactyl, it's the Weird Terror coming week 2, the next on the team is Chanel number 9, the Aromatisse Specially defensive Aromatisse Calm Nature with Aroma Veil so that we can't be taunted and other shenanigans. Reflect Moonblast Aromatherapy and Wish. This is basically our special war for this week. Uh, Reflect is there so that if they switch a physical hitter in on us, we can at least get a Reflect up and reduce the damage for a while. Moonblast is there so that we can actually do damage to things. Aromatherapy is there to get rid of any nasty paralysis or sleeps or burns or we don't want them. 
and which is there for recovery. We also have the Costat Berry, so that if it looks like Aromatisse is going to go down and it's uh, uh, wish recovery is out of the question, we can just uh, pop that Custat Berry and get one last move out before Aromatisse goes down. So probably either a Reflect or a Moonblast if we want to deal some last minute damage before Aromatisse goes down. So it's kind of a uh, kind of a Hail Mary play there. You know, kind of like, let's go for it, we're going down anyway, let's do something that might make a difference to the game. So that's Aromatisse, the third Mon on the team this week. Returning again is Mrs. Meme. Yep, she's back. She's hungry for that kill that she was robbed of last week. Those four tiny hit points on Skuntank were all the separated Jinx and one kill on her board. Sad times, sad times. Now, this is a very specific spread. Everything else is pretty much 252, 252. This one's more specific. Uh, 28 HP gives us a tiny bit of livability. I was hoping for a bit more, but I also wanted to uh, outspeed, well, I wanted to compete with Mega Lopunny. And it turns out that with 228 speed and a choice scar, Mrs. Meme the Jinx can actually speed creep Mega Lopunny. So, that's a thing. That's a thing. So that's that's gonna that's gonna be helpful. This is a timid jinx, so it will speed creep jolly um, mega low pony. These are my words. As for coverage, we've got dry skin, so we can switch in on water moves from Vaporeon. Psychic. If as long as mega low pony is not invested in HP or special defense, psychic will one shot mega low pony. I've calculated it. Uh, energy Ball is there for Vaporeon. Signal Beam hits quite a few things as well. It hits Umbreon, it hits Tangrowth, and it hits uh, something else, I think. Mew. Mew. It hits Mew. And then we've got Focus Blast on there as well. Now, I don't like relying on Focus Blast. As I said last week in the Team Planner, I've never landed a Focus Blast in my life. Not when it mattered. Never. So I don't want to rely on it. But if we find ourselves in a in a situation where we're staring down a Curum with Jinx. Focus Blast is the way to go. It's the best option we've got. It's literally the best option that Jinx has. So that's why it's there. Focus Blast is there specifically just to get some damage off on the Curum. So that's Mrs. Meme also coming to the week two match. Next on the roster is uh, an old friend of mine, an old VGC buddy. None other than Red the Latias. Yeah, Latias is coming. Dear old faithful Red. She is the physical wall of the team this week. Four special attacks, so we've got a little bit of extra... A little bit of an extra poke on that special attack bar. Bold nature, so obviously we've got the boosted defense stat. Levitate, because that's the only ability that Latias can have. We've got the Rocky Helmet there, so that when physical attackers hit us, not only will they not be doing much damage to us, hopefully, they also will be taking damage back themselves from the recoil. And then, of course, they'll take any other recoil that they would take back as well. So, say, Life Orb, or in the case of, like, Double Edge and stuff like that. We've got Thunder Wave to slow things down. This is what I was saying earlier on about how we can slow down Mechalopony for Aerodactyl. We get the thun if we can get a thunder wave off onto Megalopony, we can slow it down enough that Aeronactyl then can then outspeed it and just destroy it. Just knock it into next month with a sky attack, as long as we've still got the power herb intact. Uh, Calm Mind is there because if we get a chance, we can set up with a few Calm Minds and with the high HP and physical defense, plus the innate base stat of 130 special special defense, I believe it is. Um, with a few car mines set up, this Latias will be an absolute nightmare to take down. Uh, recover is there, obviously, for recovery. And we've also got Dragon Pulse because uh, Trip has got absolutely nothing on his active team, on, it, on his active team listing. That, take, that resists dragon attacks. He left both Bronzong 
and Togetic on his bench. Now the only two mods he's got that resist Dragon. He would probably be, be bringing Kyurem. I'd be surprised not to see Kyurem to be honest. So it's not going to end your Dragon Pulse, especially if we have managed to set up with a few calm mines. So that's Red the Latias, kind of there to do some T-Wave support. But other than that, uh, we'll be tanking the physical hits, recovering up, dealing out minor damage, I guess, with the Rocky Helmet as well. So that'll be a little bit of damage dealt as well. Because any damage is good damage. And uh, Dragon Pulse is there, so we've got some sort of defensive option. As I say, Triple's got nothing that resists Dragon. So the next one on the team also... This is his first match of the season. Is Grasshopper, the Mayan Chow. Ha, ah, Grasshopper. 252 attack and speed, full special defense. Jolly, reckless ability with a choice scarf and high jump kick. This is scarfed, reckless, high jump kick, Mayan Chow. This thing is going to take souls and it's going to keep them and dangle them about and it's going to show all its friends the collection of souls it has after the match nothing on Trip's team even Mew wants to take a reckless high jump kick from a fully invested Mian Chow nothing we've got Drain Punch there because that's a more reliable option if we need it uh, it gives us a bit of recovery as well not that this is the bulkiest Mian, Mian Chow set but Mian Chow's not super frail, but it's also not particularly like over bulky. But Drain Punch gives us a recover recovery option anyway. If he does want to run Willow on Mew or Flame Orb Trick Me or something like that, I don't know. If he wants to try and burn me or T Wave me, then he's gonna learn that was a bad mistake because we are running the facade. And uh, we've also got the U-turn there for a bit of extra coverage. It does hit the Mew super effectively. It will also hit the Umbreon, but we have fighting moves, so there'd be no point to using U-turn over a fighting move against Umbreon. U-turn is mostly there for a bit of momentum and for hitting Mew. Because even though it doesn't want to take a high jump kick, it will still take it and then it will kill us for Psychic. So we don't really want to be staying in on Mew at all. So that's my Ensha. And the next Pokemon on the team, and I believe is the last, uh, yes it is, is the viewer's choice. You picked this one, guys. I know you've been looking forward to it coming since I mentioned it last week. Don't say you haven't. Is none other than Jerry Bacintino. 252 attack and speed for defense. Adamant nature because we don't really need the extra speed investment because this does actually outspeed everything that doesn't have a scar except for Mega Bunny. So if we can take out Mega Bunny with our combination of Jinx, Latias and Aerodactyl, then Jerry can basically come in and do a lot of damage to a lot of things. There's also even potentially a late game sweep if we can weaken things enough. It does around 75 to 82% damage to Entei with the Rock Blast. Bullet Seed I imagine will completely ruin Vaporeon's day. Uh, knockoff is there as an option for when we've not, not got anything super effective we can basically just knock off the item because that's always handy to do is get rid of like life orbs and things like that uh, especially assault vests from things like Tangrowth and speaking of Tangrowth we also have Gunk Shot which has a chance to two hit KO a fully defensive Tangrowth I think it's like uh, 45 to 52 percent damage from a gunk shot on a fully defensive tank growth, so that's not bad. So there is a chance there to two hit KO defensive tank growth. So that is my team this week. So I hope you like it, guys. I'm quite proud of it. I'm quite proud of the Sky Attack Aerodactyl. Uh, I think Jerry the Tintino could do things as well. I'm hoping we can also get a kill or two with Jinx. That would be wonderful. Um, as always, I'm here to have fun, but I will be going for the win, guys. I would like to win. I'd like to get at least one win, because that was my record in Season 1, was one win. So, I'd like to at least match that, or beat it this season. That's my goal. So, yes, that is my team for Week 2 of the Battle Union against Trip and the Dallas Arabia. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. I hope you have enjoyed this video. 
as always, please let me know what you think of the team down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear feedback from you guys all the while. I will, of course, leave all the links to Trip uh, and the official TBU Twitters and YouTube channels uh, in the description down below. So if you want to check those out, please do. I would highly recommend this. But that's about it. That's that's our team for week two, guys. So I'm hope I'm hopeful that we can do things and stuff. That would be nice if we if we could do things and stuff. Um, but well, I guess we'll see. So the battle video will be up tomorrow because again, this is Thursday. This is going up Thursday, and the battle video goes up on Friday. It was wet. It was late last week because I had some, some last minute technical issues that I did not foresee. But uh, I'm prepared this week. I have countermeasures in in place. So, again, thank you for joining me, everybody. Take care of yourselves. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.